Hello everybody, it's Luigi here, and welcome to my new let's play of Pikmin 2! I'm gonna start off with a hot take here. Uh, it's opinion, so I don't really can be a hot take, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Pikmin 2 is my first and favorite Pikmin game. I know, people don't really like Pikmin 2, but I love it for every, the reasons everyone hates it. Because, I don't know, I just really like the difficulty of the game. And this is one that started my Pikmin adventure, so I'm a little nostalgic for it. So, yeah, I don't see any reason we can't just start now. I'm really excited to do this. I've been waiting this one for a long, long time. Right after my first picked one, actually. So, yeah. Let's begin. All right. Hmm. I just say file in here. I didn't know that, actually. Hmm. Let's start with file three. So cool. Hockey Freight is a long-haul deep space shipping company. One day, it's the only employee of any merit, Captain Olimar, crashed on an uncharted planet while on an interstellar vacation. There he was aided by indigenous creatures, which he called Pikmin. In the end, Captain Olimar escaped. But in Olimar's absence, his employer, Hawkatate Fright, ran into financial difficulties. Captain Olimar. Planet Hockatate. Hockatate Fright. President of Hockatate Fright and local employee, Louie. Valley of Repose. Even when we dodge the meteor on our way in, we still crash land. I mean, 
A little bit less this time. Bzzar. That was close. I have averted a crash. Landing. Running diagnostics. At alert danger. Louis is missing. He must have somehow fallen out of his cockpit. He is not responding via the communicator. He is either flo flouting protocol or in danger. Olimar, you must find Louis before he freezes to death in the cold of this planet. Wait a moment. Look. Could these be Pikmin? They look like they are about to be devoured as we speak. You must help them point and the screen and press B to call them with your whistle. You can also hold B to make the sound of your whistle carry farther, remember? I guess the good ending of Pikmin Roll was canon. The Pikmin ran to your side. They seem to re remember you, Captain Olimar. How fascinating. Give them instructions and not delay. Hold A to grab Pikmin and then point the screen to release to throw it. Find a dwarf bulborb. One shotted. Uh, so here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is tutorial day, I'm not surprised. Attention, Captain Olimar. I have just reestablished re my communications link with Louis. It is fortunate we have managed to confirm his safety. Press minus to communicate with him. I am quite interested in the details of his condition. Minus pulled up the map in the last game. In this game, we swap to Louis. Louis, allow me to assess your condition as per our safety protocols. Are you at all injured? Is that so? Then my concerns are eased. Our communication link shows you are nearby. Can you make your way to our location and rejoin us? I will navigate for you. Please press plus to contact me and obtain information about the terrain. I don't think I've actually ever done that. Oh, it's just the map. Yeah, plus it's just your hot spot for all the things. I need a little face plan right here. Now, I love the characters in this game, as you can already tell. In that opening cutscene, there's already so much personality. Louis, the odd object before you appears to be one of the onions mentioned in Olimar's reputed report. Must have been a short report. You got home at like five minutes ago. I love the faces in this game. I love this game. A scene of the onion ejected, just sprouted. According to Olimar, support, it can be plucked with A. Louis, this must be one of the Pikmin creatures from Alamar's report. It is staring at you. You can press down on the D-pad to issue objectives to your Pikmin squad and direct their movement. Yes, that is very important. Do that. You can disband your squad with C. Interesting. Not really useful right now. Alamar's description of the creature resembling pick pick carrots was strikingly accurate. Louis, my sensors have dedicated drool in the corner of your mouth. Are you all right? They're looking at you, not me. That was pretty funny, though. Yeah, something you're going to learn about Louis. He's an eater. But just like the first game. We knock down these pellet posies. 
the Pikmin will pick it up and carry it back. And sprout more. But yeah, the characters in this game, awesome. The president of Hakushite Fright, as you saw in the opening cutscene, doesn't really have a name. But he's one of my favorites. As you can tell, he got like blasted off when the ship took off. The onion ejected more seeds. The pellet from the flower must hold nutrients that breed Pikmin. Yes, the Pikmin gathering nutrients. Haul them to the onion and further propagate the species. The onion is a Pikmin mothership. Reviewing Alamar's report, it seems repeatedly tapping A lets one rapidly pluck Pikmin sprouts. That is true. As you can actually probably tell, I forgot to bring this up. I am playing the Wii version, not the GameCube version. I don't want to torture myself with that. I hate the GameCube controls. Uh, yeah. Wii versions are better. I don't think there's... They added the uh, holding A and hitting B to swap Pikmin types in this game. In the GameCube version. So that's, so that's pretty good, I guess. That's a new feature in this game that's kind of just taken for granted now. And I'd be surprised, because without that feature, this game would be very hard. Very different game. Well, more hard than it already is. This game gets quite difficult. But I don't care. I love Pikmin, so it's fine. So as we, if we can swap back over to Alma and tell me, please. You know what? Just, just, just charge onto this. Now if you can notice. Alma and Louie have different whistles. Okay, I want to pluck. Every time I pluck a pick in my Wiimote, it makes a sound. Duracell? Nah, not, not double A, so I don't really care. Perhaps this object is one of the treasures that we are searching for. The only reason we found it here is because this is where your crash landed. How fortunate. I would like to appraise it. You must regroup with Almar first. Can you see him? Press Z to move this camera behind you. You can always press left or right on the D-pad to zoom out and zoom up and on D-pad to change angles. Yeah, we'll come back to Duracell battery over here for a moment. Uh, yeah, you can always zoom in and out. If you hit the top button, you can do a top down perspective. But usually, the only camera control you ever really need to know about is just to, um, what's it called? Hit Z. That's all you ever really need. Now, if we throw a Pikmin on top of this paper bag. Backflip. Captain Olimar, Louie. They're all reunited at last. That this has been a troublesome start to our trip. But now you must feel assured that you are combined which can get you through anything, correct? From now on, use B to form a single group, C to make solo action, and minus to change leaders. So yeah, now we are together. So Louis is following me now. Now you swap to Louie, if I want to play as Louie. And I'll play as Louie, I like Louie. Louie's pretty cool. But now, if we head back to... The Duracell battery. Put Pikmin onto it. There you go. It's a funny noise. Now we'll begin to dig it up. I think digging's new to this game. But we need 20 Pikmin to carry it. We don't have that much. I believe the, uh, the down on the D-pad, uh, command is the opposite of the whistle. Oh, wait. I need to see this. 35! We don't have enough. But actually, we have a bulb orb over here. Super tree branch. We have a bulb orb over here that can use some carrying. And they will take it back to the mothership, because this also has nutrients in it for Pikmin. 
I have a little chant while carrying things. So, let's recap the story a bit. Olimar, well, the events of Pikmin 1 take place. Olimar escapes the planet with all of his treasures on board. Not treasures, all of his uh, ship parts on board. Gets to Hogger Tape, right? Goes to his company first. Gets his ship taken that you spent the entire first game building to sell it, to sell it off. Even though I don't know, even know how it's a company asset if he took it for vacation. It's whatever. And then it drops the souvenir he got for his son, sold it, and then immediately went back to the planet and almost killed him. Pikmin lore. But the Pikmin are almost back to the onion. Now I'm going to circle it. No reason. And they all do a victory dance. Pew, pew, pew. And 20. That's, that's what we need for the Duracell battery. Now, all of them are also plucking, even though he's not being controlled. Because things done twice as fast. Alright, squad. March! Oh, they're on me. Okay. Oh, they're stuck behind the battery. Now, they'll start carrying it. Very slowly. And yes, we can punch in this game as well. Actually, could you punch in the last game? I don't know if you could. No, you probably could. But yes, you can punch in this game. You can do very little damage to enemies. Now, as you can see, we don't have a timer up top. Um, yeah. It's tutorial day. That's usually how it goes for Pikmin. But every time you spot to a character, you can hear this. Olimar. Louis. It's more of their Japanese names, but... Xir. Odmar. Now, we mentioned how, um... Olimar's name... In Japanese is an anagram of Mario's name. We can't say the same thing about Louis, but Louis does kind of sound like Luigi. Pretty nice. And if you spell president backwards, it spells Bowser. So, you know. But now, the Duracell battery is back. Name? Courage Reactor. We don't actually know what these products are named. Our first day of exploration has yielded our first treasure. It will be done in record time. I took the liberty of naming it when I appraised it. The name reflecting my current thinking. Leave it to me to think of catchy names or hit products. It is but one of my many talents. We shall end our first day here and report back to the president. His face will be surely joyous. However, the communic the communi to communicate with Akatate, we must fly into a low orbit above the planet. Of course. We will not return to the surface until morning, so as to avoid the indigenous nocturnal creatures. Get the nice same end of the day theme. And the ship is right. One of the talents is coming up with catchy hit names for products. The bulb warp came back to life. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and 280, 280 Pocos from the Courage Reactor. You gained 20 Pikmin. We got some mail, though. You found your first bit of treasure. Fine work. Our future depends on your efforts. So check your treasure hoard regularly. I'll check in often. Keep up the pace. The mail is, like, one of the best parts of the game, to be honest. Get to learn so much about other characters. But you know, since it is the first episode and I've been waiting to play this game a long time, let's do day two. It's also another tutorial day, really, so. Back to the Valley of Repose.
Good morning, workers. Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? So true. So true. The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures. You're a hunk of metal. No wonder the lack of survival skills. They lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press 8 o'clock. You know, you're not wrong there. I mean, I had to teach him how to fight. You calm all out. Let's get Louie over here. Now. Pikmin on that. Now, there's more pellet poses around camp. To raise up more Pikmin. Now, uh, something important to note. Pikmin 2 is all about multitasking. You all, you want to do something with one captain while the other captain does something else. And it's also about babysitting Pikmin because, you know, it's a Pikmin game. Pikmin aren't very smart. The AI hasn't really updated. But uh, tripping is no longer really a big problem. They don't really like trip and like halt. They like kind of like stray a little off and then the, the path and then come back to your group. That's kind of how tripping works in this game. That's not what I wanted. Boom. Now, uh, after the end of this, we should have enough Pikmin to crush this. Right. Yeah, wait. Yeah, that guy did trip over there, I think. A little hard to tell. But yeah, let's mention the cursor. The little uh, triangle that's like a 3D model above the cursor. Oh, I thought that was a hard plus something. Um, that's what Pikmin color you have pointed, right? Oh, there's also a sundial up here. We also have a certain amount of time. Yeah, that's a sundial. Um, no, no, this is the, it tells you what Pikmin it is. Now, if we spread out really far... That little, uh, not the, not the hollow circle, the, the one with the three shapes, not the, not the three, I can't count, the four shapes that are moving, that is how far your Pikmin are going, and then the other circle, uh, with the red thing above it, that's how far your whistle's going. I don't know why I did that, I'm an idiot. Pikmin up here. Crush the paper bag. Makes a little sound. Here's a bubble orb, let's just crush the solar our Pikmin onto it. And I actually I'll wait on that. Because we have a new enemy, a very strong one. Red bulb orb. Now last game we were just gonna rush it from behind. But in this game there's a new strategy. You can throw Pikmin a lot faster in this game. So all you want to do is just throw Pikmin onto it. Get really nice and close to it. And boom. No deaths. And this thing went really far away. For five. We got a new treasure here, though. Um, the game doesn't go into the cutscene every time you find one. I believe it costs. I believe it's 40 Pikmin to carry it back, so I think we'll wait on that one. If you leave a if you leave a captain at base, sadly, it won't pluck Pikmin automatically for you. It just kind of stinks, but now nah, what do you can do? So actually, if I disband with C. Gets rid of Louie on my team too, so I'm gonna go over here and explore to see what's with, uh, see if I left anything over here. There are some pellet posies actually, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, they're gonna go stick to the wall because they're not very smart. So here, I'll give a nice example of multitasking. As the Pikmin are carrying this back. Oh. Oh, no, those guys just got stuck on a wall. They don't think they tripped. See, see if they can trip. When they leave, they're more likely to trip. Also, when you disband with C, they don't actually completely change color like in the first game. They don't gray out. They just kind of glow still. Get, get back here. You there. You there, you there. We have two on each. Now, while that's happening, switch to Odmo. I love making noises. And let's pluck our Pikmin. We have a total of 59 right now. Pluck all our 
Pikmin up. Boom. Uh, the game looks really good for GameCube. I mean, I don't think they updated the graphics much for the Wii version, but it still looks really nice. Still have, I still think it looks uh, pretty graphical improvement over the first one, even though they don't really change much. And I believe Pikmin 2 actually came out a year after Pikmin 1, sort of like a Majora's Mask Ocarina of Time type situation. Oh, it cost 35, never mind. Because well, they just reuse so many assets. But, eh, still a fun game. Now, over here, we have a new thing. No, wait, no, we've had these in the first game. They're gates, so you just kind of break them down. You put your Pikmin onto them to break them down. Something else I want to mention. Duracell batteries. <laughs> that is an Earth-exclusive item. <laughs> That's a stupid way of saying it, but it's true. Only Earth has Duracell batteries on it, unless the Mars rovers are powered by Duracell batteries, which I highly doubt. Now... This confirms that Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 1 and all the other Pikmin games take place on planet Earth. Post apocalyptic and human. Post apocalyptic human stuff. Because all the. This stuff is all broken stuff. And they're all just kind of lying around. And you never really see people, so you know, it's what people assume. Also, another thing to back this up is that, um. In the first game, we got the Geiger counter. Olimar didn't really know what it was. It was a Geiger counter, though. There was a lot of radiation going off. So, I guess... Nuclear Warfare kind of ended off the Pikmin series. I mean, ended off the Human Race series, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Kind of grim. But, oh my god, we got our second treasure! It has the president's face on it. Utter scrap. I don't really know what it is. It's like some type of bottle. It's been crushed. Where the heck is all our other Pikmin? Check the map to see where they are. Oh, yeah, they're at the wall. Now that we have our army of red Pikmin, we can continue breaking down the wall. And that'll go a lot faster. Now, times like these just kind of have to wait. Nothing else you can really do. But in my scenery, like this is a giant manhole cover. It's pretty nice. This is also something else you can do that's really fun. Now, the gate is broken. How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When masked, their might is ferocious. Louis, did Almar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? Apparently not. Alamar, you are failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Press A to grab Pikmin and th release to throw them. Call A into a group. To call them into a group with B. Press C to disband the group, point at the screen, and press down the D-pad to issue orders. Press down on the D-pad to swarm Pikmin on treasure and enemies, or make them march in a line. Yeah, that was just a recap of all the controls. I don't know if you can check them in the... Home screen. You cannot. Hmm. Now, nah, okay. <laughs> now I was mentioned, but you know, fine. Let's go. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear. The leader group of Pikmin will join you. Leader will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod too. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. Well, time to get to the main thing of Pikmin 2. The Virgin's Cave. And to the, the hole with your Pikmin squad? I will. Spelunking.
intriguing. My heat sensors indicate that this hole is interior is warmer than on the surface. Analysis suggests danger lies ahead, but the promise of treasure is tantalizing. If you wish to check underground terrain, press plus to communicate with me. I am not just a ship. I am an all-purpose support pod. Now, there's no onions down here. There is no possible way to get more Pikmin to sprout down here. You, what you're coming in with is what you're staying with most of the time. There's some exceptions I'll get into later. But here, we got a 7-up cap. But we also have two enemies. Snow Bulborbs. They're just Bulborbs. No dwarf bulbers. They usually come in packs. Don't worry a lot. Of, don't worry about them. They're just weak. Now it's a no, no, it's a treasure. All right. I don't remember what all the treasures' names are because I want to be surprised because I need these quenching emblem because these are actually pretty funny names. No, I believe something with the quenching emblem. Uh, nope, I'm crazy. Nothing I want to say about the quenching album. Now, if we bring back a bulwark, we also have another treasure here. You know, let's grab all the other guys. We have nothing better to do. I'm wait for that to come back. Now, bring back a enemy. Zar, zar, zar. How can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But I do not think beasts will be worth much. Yeah, they're only worth, like, a few pokos. As you can see here. We got two Pokos for those guys. It's not really worth collecting them, so just focus on the treasures. You'll be fine. Citrus Lump. I don't. I, I honestly don't see how beasts are worth not a lot of money, considering you can pay a lot for exotic animals. And that noise right there, though. Means no more treasure on the floor. Now, all of my Pikmin are not with the captain. If I go to the next. Thanks, game. This hall appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead. Louis, you do recall this. You can adjust the camera. With yes, yes, I'm, I'm correct. Your expression suggests you do. Excellence. Yes, you can see me. Don't worry, all your Pikmin will follow you. Approach the hole and press A to enter it. Yes, all your Pikmin will follow you into it. As long as you have a live Pikmin on the floor, they will come to you with you the next one, as you can see right here. Virgin's Cave, sub-level 2. FINAL FLOOR! Let's just get rid of these snowball birds. I'm not even gonna bother bringing them back. But we got another treasure! This one's important. It's inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even a hundred of Pikmin will be unable to lift it. And hundred is the max, just like the last game. As you can see right here, we need a hundred and one. Louie, can't you just put your put your back into it? I mean, we only have 65, not have a hundred, but you know, you can carry it. You'll be fine. Also, if you can tell, that's a globe. And it has the Earth's surface on it. Again, supporting the theory that this is just Earth. Well, it's not a theory anymore. It's actually confirmed. Are the snowball orbs? Let's, sw let's swarm one. Nope, never mind. Guess not. Now, we have something new down here. These are called Violet Candy Pop Buds. A 
astounding. A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. Alright, whatever they say. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh, oh. Get more in. More in! There. Dakota man, my body is ready. Amazing! A purple Pikmin! It has hair, and it is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into the flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps there are others. Yes! There are new Pikmin types in this game. These are purple Pikmin. The most broken Pikmin in the franchise, actually. <laughs> One of the most broken Pikmin in the franchise, really. Yeah, they're kind of... They're pretty broken. They're pretty unbalanced. But that's why I love them. Also, they're adorable. I love purple Pikmin. I'll get into why later. Every time you see a violet candy pop, bud, my advice, throw your Pikmin to it. Now, let's take out a purple Pikmin. They also sound different. Oh, not that one, I guess. They can carry... They, they have the power of 10 Pikmin to carry stuff. 10 Pikmin. So if you have a squad of 10 purple Pikmin, you could carry a hundred thing that weighs a hundred. And if you hold down A and hit B, you can swap the Pikmin. I want purple Pikmin. They're a little slow though, that's kind of their downside. I already have 65 because of our few purple Pikmin. I'll just swarm everyone onto it. Now we have like a hundred and fifty-five carrying. And pig purple pigment are slower at carrying things too, but it's a much needed sacrifice. Actually, I'm gonna walk down to that, the exit of the cave. So it's quicker that way. Also, multitasking. Yeah, so there are new pigment types in this game, and they're my favorite of the bunch. Astounding! Water is shooting out of the geyser with incredible force. Sensors indicate it is enough power to launch you into the air. Approach and press A to try. That's weird, but okay. Two hundred Pocos. Hey, almost a tenth of the way there to the ten thousand mark. Spherical Atlas. One tenth of the way, I guess. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside the sphere, retrieving data. Error. I can only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve a new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the sphere chart. It's actually a semi sphere. Press plus to contact me. And the exploration kit on the radar screen by pressing on the left. Now that we have new data, you should go explore the Dakota territory tomorrow. Now, since we're already here, that means there are no treasures left on the floor. Let's escape to the surface. And the purple Pikmin are nice enough to come with. We had no Pikmin die. Nice. I'll save. There's not really any harm in saving. <laughs> uh, 
You have successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision making, gentlemen. We must celebrate your successful spelunking expedition. You gather a large amount of data in the need of in depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. The end of the cutscene is to start another. Almar and Louis, and since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? I said, well, you may not realize it, but you are exhausted. Is that like gaslighting or something? You should take a much needed rest, as you have all time and you need to collect treasures. Also, didn't today you say we need to start toiling for the profit of our company? What? Pick a side, ship. Haste to make waste, so take it slow and steady. Now the purple Pikmin, they're riding shotgun with us. Something I'd also like to mention, actually I'll mention it in the, in the next episode. Bye bye red bulborbs, dwarf red bulborbs. Increase the Pikmin all together. Let's see, mail time. Maybe steps first on the mark. Plan well and don't worry about the art that is with happy Hogatate savings alone after all. Besides, there's nothing left to repossess, so ha! I think that's gonna do it for the first episode of Pikmin 2. Next time on Pikmin 2, Awakening Wood. See you guys then.